And next point is, what can you do differently? Let's say if you found this mutation, right? And what else are you going to do other than, let's say, of course, let's say you're going to tell the family members get screened because of higher risk. What other things are you going to do? You touched upon a little bit, you know, sending to ophthalmologist if you have that specific genes. And uh, I think I believe it was the BAP1 gene. And uh, if you know, you're talking about uh, getting screened for pancreatic cancer, if you have uh, CDK and a 2A. Um, but what do you recommend for that patient particularly? I mean, in addition to, let's say, three to four months of routine skin exam with the dermatologist, what else can they do? Yeah. I mean, I think that one of the things that we found in some of the research we did, which I think is pretty exciting, um, is that when we, when we did genetic testing on people who had not had genetic testing before, for, uh, and we, we were looking, particularly in this study, we were looking at P16, the CDKN2A. Um, what we found was really remarkable, which is that once you've reported back their carrier status, once they know that they're a carrier of that mutation, um, that pathogenic variant, once, once they know that, they, uh, they become more compliant mm. with recommendations. So there's something about it. It turns a little cognitive switch in their brain that all of a sudden then they're more aware of their sun exposure. They use better clothing and sunscreens and all of those things to protect themselves from sun. They do more self-skin exams, right? They, they're, they're more aware of their body. They're paying better attention. So they catch things early and they're more likely to go to see um, a, a medical professional for a regular skin exam, which also helps them to catch things early. So, so on one end, part of the reason to do the test, I think at this point, because of this data, part of the reason to do the testing is to empower the patient to do better self-care because it really, it, it impacts their ability to really appreciate the consequences of not doing that. And, and, and that's is, the, the reason for that is unclear, but it's really interesting, right? But this is basically um, helping the patient to comply better. But this is even more so than, uh, so you're saying that having that genetic uh, report and you will give them more compelling reason to do those preventions and follow-up, despite the fact that, you know, the prior history of yeah. melanoma is not changing, not nudging them towards that photo protection behavior. It's that report that actually sort of tip yeah. them over. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, let me so, give you an example. Let sure. me give you an example of this. So we, um, we, so I had one patient who, um, you know, he, he had, he'd had three melanomas, okay, himself. He was a P16 mutation carrier. He'd had three melanomas himself, his family members. He had probably had, I don't know, 10 family members wow. with, with melanoma. Several of them had died, right? But he was tanning in a tanning uh. salon, okay? He was tanning in a tanning salon. And, um, and I, I counseled him in clinic every single time, every single time. And um, finally, I said, you know, I think we need to get your genetic testing done for you for you individually. And we did. And the next time he came in, he had stopped tanning Wow! and he was using self tanner. Wow. And, you know, and it was remarkable turnaround, but what we saw, you know, in this, in this, um, study was we, it was controlled, right? I mean, it was controlled. Every single person in the, in the group had a family history of melanoma. They all knew about melanoma because of their family history. They all had this genetic pattern, right? None of them had had melanoma yet. And they were all very, very similar at baseline in all of their compliance. But the ones that got the report back became more compliant than the ones that didn't. That's amazing. Right? I mean, it was a real study. That's so a real amazing. It's, so it empowers, it empowers people, right? It empowers people to, to do what they know they should be doing anyway, right? So, so it helps them overcome whatever that barrier is. No, that's that's a that's an amazing study. I mean, I think that's one of the benefits I've never really actually thought of. Um, how much does it cost? Does insurance cover 
And no, so but I didn't. I, there's more. There's more. I sure. don't know if you want to hear more. But no, no, there please, are more please, go reasons on. reasons to do genetic testing besides that. Oh, but what what are other reasons? But well, oh, so the other. So one of the other um, things is, as you mentioned, um, you need to know how frequently to screen people um, with respect to not only their skin but to any other mm. cancer that they're susceptible to because of the, the gene, the bad gene that they've, they've got, or where it's not a bad gene, the variant that they've got, right? So, you know, we know what, what those cancers are and the, the, the likelihood that they're going to happen. And that helps us a lot to say, okay, this person needs to have screening for ophthalmology and renal and pancreatic, and this one needs breast and, and colon and whatever it is that they need based on those genes. And so that's very important because that's the real benefit of, of knowing the risk ahead of time is preventing it from getting out of control, right? So the screening yep. and the prevention is the basic reason for, for, for doing all this. And then I think what your point was is, is absolutely really important, which is that, um, um, you know, if they've got it, then probably other members of their family have the same thing, but they haven't had cancer yet. And giving them that information before it happens can not only save their lives, but it can make them, um, it, it, it can, it can have Im impact on what they do with their lives, right? Yep. Yep. Do they, do they become a, a lifeguard, a professional lifeguard? Or do they decide to work in a, an indoor job, you know? I mean, I, I think that, that it's about choice and it's about empowering people to have that knowledge as power, as a foundation for, for living their lives. No, those are all very great reasons. 